What's going on guys, Sam here, and today I want to talk to you guys about a somewhat overlooked huge advancement in Unreal Engine 5, uh, something that feels a bit overshadowed by Lumen and Nanite, which are incredible advancements, but this is another groundbreaking feature of UE5, which is another game changer, and uh, that is the addition of fluid simulation into the real-time UE5 editor through Niagara. So what a fluid simulation is, is it essentially sends out simulated gas or fluid into the scene based on your inputted vector settings, so direction, intensity, and speed, and then it applies physics and forces to that simulated gas or fluid, which are specified by you, much like a physics collision simulation, except with with fluids. So this means that it will act in a realistic way and it's going to be able to interact with objects in your scene rather than just being a particle system which shoots out particles and uses image projection or specified physics to create the look. So what that means is that you're going to have completely dynamic fluid simulations. So fire, smoke, explosions, things like that, and also water. And that's all going to be inside your real-time game or cinematic render. So just to put this into perspective, I used to use uh, FumeFX back in the day. You would have to run a simulation, wait for it to process, and then it would take hours to render within your scene. So now we've got realistic ray trace lighting from Lumen, fluid simulation which is updating in real time while interacting with objects in your scene and even objects in your game. This even includes simulated physics objects, so you know, say you break a piece of a wall off and it flies through a cloud of smoke. Uh, that will also interact with your smoke as well. This is an incredible advancement in Unreal Engine 5 and something that's really going to take it to the next level in terms of virtual production and using it as a post-production tool for filmmakers because now you're able to have realistic real-time fluid simulations which are going to actually interact with your scene. So we're getting closer and closer to having the full capabilities of a fully dedicated 3D renderer inside of Unreal Engine 5 and that means that there's a lot more that you can do with in-camera VFX and using it as a post-production tool as well. So Epic is definitely hearing us when we say we want these new features and it's really becoming an extremely viable and useful tool as a post-production workhorse in addition to all its other uses. So let's just take a quick look at this fluid simulation now. So this is what we're going to be creating here and uh, as you can see we have this ship kind of flying through this cloud of smoke and I'm just going to go over some of the basics of how you can achieve this look and just how to you know basically set up your fluid simulation inside of Unreal Engine 5. So if we go inside of Unreal Engine 5 here you can see that I've set up the scene for you guys. So if you guys want to learn how to build this scene you know this is kind of what my new course in Unreal Engine 5 goes over. So we go over uh, from start to finish building the scene from the ground up from scratch scratch all the way through rendering with render passes and getting the best render settings for the most cinematic results out of your renders all the way through using those tools to composite in Adobe After Effects and Blackmagic Design Fusion and it basically teaches you the full process full pipeline of creating a visual effect shot in Unreal Engine and using it with pretty much any compositor so uh, it's a really valuable training I highly recommend it and you can pick that up on boundless-resource.com I'll leave a link in the description but anyway so we have this scene set up and what I'm going to be showing you guys today is we have this particular shot here set up. So we just have this ship and it's kind of just flying by the camera. So before we actually can have access to the new Niagara Fluid Simulations, we have to go up here into Edit and go down to Plugins and we're going to have to enable this plugin. So we're going to search for Niagara and we have a lot of different options here but we want to turn on this Niagara Fluids uh, which is the fluid simulation toolkit for Niagara so we're gonna click on that and it's gonna warn you that this is a beta version uh, that's okay we're gonna hit yes and then we're going to have to restart our engine so we're gonna go ahead and click on restart now alright so we're back inside of Unreal Engine here and uh, it might take some time for some shaders to compile it actually was really quick for me so be patient with that now we have our scene here and what I want to do is maybe add some smoke coming out from this building to have our ship be able to fly through it so what we're going to do is go down into our content drawer. I've created this new folder called Niagara Fluids. And we're going to right click in here. I'm going to go to FX and we're going to go down to Niagara System. What we're going to do is create a new system from a template or behavior example. We're going to hit next. And now you can see we have a lot of different options for our 2D gas simulations, our 2D liquid, our 3D gas, 
and our 3D liquid simulations. This is really powerful and as you can see, you know, even just from these thumbnails here, we have some pretty high resolution stuff. We have a lot of control of that, which I'm going to get into in this tutorial. So for what we want to do, I'm going to just go with this grid 3D gas simple particle source. This is going to give us a good starting point for a lot of our effects here. So it's going to create this Niagara system and it's going to take some time to uh, prepare the shaders here, but we can in the meantime name it. Uh, we'll just call this NS underscore fire. Our shaders have compiled, so uh, all we have to do right now is just take this and drag it out into our scene and immediately you're going to see that it's actually already starting to simulate and this looks pretty cool. We can kind of position it here into the general area that we want it to be. And what's great about this is it's volumetric. It has real volume to it, so it's not just a 2D image projection. This is a real simulation. Obviously, our resolution isn't very high, but we can control that. So fluid simulations are voxel-based, and what that is is a voxel is basically a three-dimensional pixel. So if we go into our Niagara actor here, and we go down here and we find our resolution max axis here. If we increase this value to something like 250, you can see that now it's starting to look much higher quality. We're getting a lot more resolution in here and it's looking more realistic. So basically what that means is that there are more voxels here in our simulation. So basically more pixels and therefore higher resolution. Just like increasing the resolution of an image, uh, it's going to cost you more in terms of your computer's resources, but it's also going to look much better and more realistic. So we can set our resolution maybe somewhere around 250 for now. We can always increase this later. And then also I'm going to show you a little bit about how you can actually increase that resolution only for your rendering so that it's not going to cost you a bunch when you're just moving around in your viewport and it will only increase that resolution when you render. So, you know, let's try like 350 and see what happens. And as you can see, it's starting to significantly slow down my computer, so our frame rate's going to suffer. So maybe we'll go down 280, something like that. And now it's still pretty smooth, so that, that should work for us. Like I said before, we actually want our ship to interact with the smoke in our scene. And the reason this doesn't happen immediately, so if I take my ship here and I just and I start moving it, you know, through the smoke, you can see it's not doing anything. And the reason that's not happening is because by default, nothing in your scene is set to collide with the particle simulation or your fluid simulation. And that's because if it was, if everything was set to automatically collide, if you pulled out one of these particle systems into your scene, it might crash your computer because it's you know, calculating all this data and all these crazy interactions with all the objects in your scene. So you're gonna have to enable that through the use of tags. So just to kind of demonstrate a little bit here what I'm about to do and how we can get our objects in our scene to interact with our Niagara actor is if we grab a cube basic actor here and we just drag it into our scene, we pull it up here around where we're going to be working with our fluid. I'm just gonna demonstrate what this whole collider system does. So if we go into our cube settings and we search for tags and we go down here to our advanced settings and then we go into our tag here, we add an array element and we're just gonna type in here, we're gonna type in collider and hit enter and we need to make sure that that's all lowercase and we spell it correctly c-o-l-l-i-d-e-r now you can take this object and you can move it through your uh, simulation and it's actually going to interact with your fluid simulation so uh, that's r a really cool great feature and you can see that we're you know it's it's interacting in a very realistic way and we can just do this in real time and have it update properly and it's also nice because then it's going to even kind of, you know, if we put it up in the middle here, you can see that it kind of wraps around uh, our cube. Very cool feature here. So here you can see we have our ship and we have our Niagara uh, particle system. And I've just animated this ship uh, to fly through our scene as I showed you guys before. I've just moved my Niagara actor out into the middle of the scene so it will collide with our ship and we can actually see what's going to happen here. So if we go into our ship and we search for tags, so we just add an element and we're gonna type in collider and we have to make sure that we spell it properly because our Niagara fluid simulation is going to reference this exact tag in order to specify which elements or which objects in our scene are colliders which will interact with our fluid simulation. So now that we've set that, if we actually play through this animation, you can see that, boom, now we have our ship hitting our 
smoke and it's causing it to react um, you know passing right through it there you can do that for any uh, object in your scene which is great but what I want to do now is actually go and start modifying my Niagara system so if we click on this box we see our NS fire instance and we can X out of this uh, get rid of that filter and we can double click on our Niagara system so now what you can see in here is we have basically these two boxes right here and if you're familiar at all with how Niagara works in the past, you had your particle source emitters and then you could add a bunch of other emitters and things like that to your system. But if I just go down here and turn on the sprite renderer, uh, and if I turn off my uh, grid gas uh, controls emitter, uh, what you can see is that if I zoom in here, um, all this is doing here, because I soloed this particle emitter, the fluid simulation works by emitting particles which act as your fluid into your scene, and then it applies physics and forces to them and simulates the reaction of your fluid. So this is basically just the building block or the starting point of how your fluid simulation is going to be emitted from the source. Okay, so once it's emitted, then this gas control emitter kind of takes over and simulates using the physics that you input into the parameters of this box it will then simulate the fluid simulation so uh, your particle so source emitter is basically just the source of your fluid simulation so if I were to make this emit at a much higher speed you would kind of have more of an explosion out this direction and then it would kind of you know float up as you specify in your gas control emitter the first node is providing your particle information which is then passed to the second node uh, which then renders your fluid simulation based on that information. So the way you control the look of your simulation, at least in terms of how the source is going to act, so if it's going to be an explosion or a steady stream of fire or, you know, it's shooting out in all directions or maybe it's smoke that's spinning in a circle, that's all going to be controlled in this area right here. Um, the look of your simulation and the, the fire and the smoke and all that is going to be controlled in here. As you can see now, it looks like fire now. That's the important difference between these two boxes here. So that's about it for this video, guys. If you are interested in learning how to build this scene uh, you see here from the ground up, from scratch, make sure you go over to boundless-resource.com and check out that course. I'll put the link in the description. I'm also offering a bundle which includes the original Unreal Engine for Filmmakers Advanced course and this new course at a huge discount I think the total is like 70 or $100 discount total so make sure you guys go over and check that out as well subscribe and also comment any new videos or courses that you guys would like to see so I just kind of wanted to introduce you guys to the world of Niagara fluid simulations obviously there's a lot more to go into on this but I just want to kind of introduce this to you and, uh, you know, get this in your head so you can start playing with it. So thanks for watching, guys, and have a good one.